Anyway, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Benny the Jet Yukitis for the ones that don't know me. <laughs> I'm Randy Reed from the great state of Wisconsin. And I'm Dave Wheaton from Santa Barbara, California. And so, actually, you know, uh, man, we've go back a couple of moons back. Yes. <laughs> However, you know, and uh, usually, you know, I, uh, the way of the martial arts of today mm -hmm. and, and how we know it and how we've been taught it back then, you know, right. back in the 50s and 60s where it all started. And, and so my, my point of view of where I see the art today mm -hmm. from all these decades that I've worked, I've seen every decade I've seen different warriors okay, and how it changed up to this day. And I see that everybody just kind of copies each other. You know, they, they go to dojo hopping, and they go to this dojo, and they say, oh, I like that, that's different, and then they go and put it in their dojo, not even knowing how to use it, right. but they just take it, and they say, hey, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what's selling. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so it's almost like, you know, they're just no. doing what's selling instead of self-defense. Yeah. And so, as we, earlier we were talking about like, for instance, you know, since Ivari Boris and myself, we were talking about how can we perfect the students? But to perfect the students and to get in them self-defense, the only way you can, uh, we talked about is the only way you can actually get them to defend themselves is to actually bring up all the emotions that they hide. And the only way to do that is to threaten them. <clears throat> But again, you know, if we threaten our students, it's not like back in, in the 60s, hey, there was a threat and it was real, but we didn't get, you know, it wasn't, we didn't have to worry about being sued, right, right. you know, and this is the land of sue. Everybody wants to sue everybody. So we water down techniques so we don't get sued and, and we, you know, protect the dojo. But, but when it came down, if we water down the technique so we don't get, then where's the true but shoot away. Right. The true art of when somebody actually comes after you. And really, so I talk about either a memorized martial arts or an ownership. A memorized martial arts means all I have to do is memorize technique and I can go to the next rank. Memorize technique and I can go. So I can get a black belt not really being tested. Even though they test me because in the dojo, they always feel safe. If it gets too out of hand, there's always going to be somebody breaking it up and making uh -huh. sure. Why? Because we don't want our students to get hurt right. eh? and so forth. So we break it up. Yeah. And, but, and this is why I was talking to you about what we have here. Eh? Uh, what we have here in the team center here is about <clears throat> tools that put people under pressure, like the ring. Mm -hmm. The ring, there's no place to run. So we use it like therapy. Because right. hey, there's no place to run and all that emotions come up. Everything you hide under your bed in your closet when you're being threatened. So w w right. what do you think about that? Well, you know, we, the way I, it was explained to me and I share it is, is we start out sparring to learn distance and timing. And, and, and we do that with our friends and it's not non-competitive. From there we may move into the competitive arena to where we agree to compete. From there, there's a fight where two guys decide they're going to fight. At the end of that is self-defense. So some people confuse fighting, I know I did, with self-defense. Um, I not only wanted to defend myself, somebody's going to try to take my wallet. I not only didn't want to defend myself, I want to take his wallet when it was all said and done. It wasn't a matter of what real self-defense is, being safe. Um, you know, when I started martial arts back in the 70s, you were, I mean, you were, the rest of the world was here. You were clear, you were so far out of your league, it wasn't even funny. You were beating up people here, you were beating up people there, you were beating people on the other side of the world. I didn't get there. the wallet, though. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get the wallet. You were ahead of your, you were ahead of your, you were ahead of your time, by far. You were one that we were just talking about. You were one of the first to really bring high-level boxing into a, uh, the kickboxing ring to the chagrin of a lot of people who were still punching karate style in there. But when we, when we were, com I, you know, I competed, Dave, we've all competed. There's a pressure that comes with that. And that kind of pressure can relate to self-defense. Mm. 
So in the classroom, if we're not doing that high level competition like we used to do and the really, really hard sparring, then what are the different techniques we can use to stress, put people under what they call adrenal stress for self-defense? There's all kinds of drills. I'm sure of you course. guys do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in this day and age, I mean, we, we all know we've all, we could sit here all afternoon and tell stories of the, the teeth and the hair and the stitches <laughs> and everything that happened in gyms. We, we're, hopefully we're smarter than that now. Yeah. Um, but it did make for some rough, tough cowboys back in the day. Well, what was your, what's your thoughts about, you know, of the, the martial of today, right now, of where it's gone throughout the decades? You know, I, th I think a lot of it is very dependent on the instructor and how, how, what their values are, right? So um, I, I put, uh, like, a lot of emphasis on self-defense. Yeah, I'm a hop kidoist, so I mm -hmm. place a lot of emphasis sure. on self-defense, right? And I keep it as real as I can, and my students develop excellent self-defense skills. Um, we don't fight, fight, square off hard often. However, most of my students can square off and mm -hmm. fight very well by, in that arena. Um, and, and as you far know, as fact, like- The fact of the matter is, out of all the students you've ever taught, how many are going to be in a real self-defense situation, number one, and how high of level of self-defense is that? There's a big difference between a fist fight with your brother-in-law over the last donut versus someone coming through your living room with a knife. So we've got a kind, there's kind of a risk reward there of do we really have to train for real high level life saving stuff um, or are, are basic martial arts done at a really high level going to pertain? Well, let's, no, talk, well, let's talk about today. Yeah. Okay, today people are more fearful, more stressed out, mm -hmm. more angry, more angry, and more sure. do yeah. not give a dang. <laughs> right. You have a lot of these young, this generation, they have a lot of anger in them, they have a lot of fear in them. And usually if they're angry, Right behind it, they're fearing that anger. That's and behind that, from. behind yeah, their yeah. fearing that anger is frustration. Mm -hmm. Behind that frustration is anxieties. So these emotions that we have inside of us today, you know, people, this, these people, these kids, should I say these teenagers of today, I heard a lot of them were saying, hey, I'm not going to make it past 18, so why should I care? Yeah. So if they're thinking that, they're predestining their their death pretty much saying I'm not going to make it past 18 if they keep saying it they will make it happen yeah right yeah. that's what they bring into their lives right that's right yeah. 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 so I, I think is, is you know to me there's three type of teachers you have trainers not all of them but most trainers that will go out there and you know they, they look at something and say oh I like that I've never seen that so they take it and they sell it like a car salesman mm -hmm. yeah. hey they sell it right, right. Hey? and then you have the ones that are actually our coaches and they go by the curriculum we're gonna do this 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 this, this and that's it and I said well what about that no we're gonna do this and they just stay with the curriculum mm -hmm. hey and then you have teachers that will teach you the inner the outer and the middle ways and teach you the balance of it so that way, they'll teach you how to do damage with it, and then they'll teach you how to heal it. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts? Sure. Well, once again, I, where's the continuum of what we're doing with these students? I, t I used to look at someone back when I first started, how fast can I get this guy to become a competitor? That was kind of what I did. Now I look at how fast can I get this person to make a lifelong commitment to being a, a lifelong martial artist? The longer they're training, we get we've got more room for all of that stuff. It can, and they can be better prepared for high level intensive stuff after they've been training for a longer period of time. Um, once again, I think it comes down to, and, and everybody's got their philosophy on this. You know, I, I went to high school in El Segundo back in the 70s, you're uh -huh. from out here, and there was more than one time there were scraps out on the street. That was a common thing. Sure. Now they don't do that. These people, uh, they're shooting guns. They're, they're, as you just said, these kids have made their decision that this is how they're going to handle things. So it's a different world out there. So physical combat sports, or sports, one thing, physical 
self-defense is a complete another thing. And then you put on top of that this new uh, new attitude and the proliferation of guns and young people with them. Uh, it's it's tough. I don't know what the the whole answer is. I know that. Uh, I'm not scrapping in the street anymore. <laughs> That's for darn sure. <laughs> I don't, you know, so my, the way that I teach hasn't changed in decades. Um, I think I've, I've gotten a lot better at teaching. But what I teach and how I teach it is pretty consistent. And I, I really don't like to chase things. Like, you know, over the years, you got to do blah, blah, blah. This is the new wave, right? It's, I don't know. I just I'm still an old school hapkido guy. I teach a little bit of taekwondo on the side and and kickboxing, and I like it. I I enjoy my job. I enjoy my life. I I don't have after school programs because I have I don't want to be a babysitter. But that's just me, right? I'm, there you go. You know, and God bless anybody. <laughs> understand? God bless anybody that loves whatever aspect that is. But yeah. I think we all should be doing what we love, and at a very high level. Right. Well, doing you know, it the best we can. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, <clears throat> is like everything else. Uh, what's your What's your thoughts? You know, on uh, on ground fighting, jujitsu, and so forth, and judo, and everything that goes to the ground. What's your thoughts about that today? Because you got MMA. Hey, everybody went through that extreme. Everybody would stand up. Everybody wanted to go to the ground. Once they knew enough on the ground, they wanted to stand back up. What, what's your thoughts about that? Well, so, the, the old saying is, it started out was, all street fights end up on the ground. And my point is, not if you know how to punch. <laughs> and uh, I'm agreeing with that. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know right. you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, having been uh, a young man in my day, and then I, I own some nightclubs, and I've, I've been out in the world enough, Man, when things go to the ground in a self-defense situation, that's a very, very dangerous situation because you don't have to be highly trained to walk over and kick somebody in the head. In a competition, when they close the ring and they have the rules, one-on-one, -on -one, man, you're not, they, they prove you've got to have that ground fighting ability. My, I, I, I like to think that I know how to get somebody on the ground, and if they get me down on the ground, I know how to get back up. But I, I, uh, I, I see jujitsu more as a sport. Now, one of my top black belts, mm -hmm. his school is, teaches half of what I teach, and the other half is a uh, Gracie jujitsu school, mm -hmm. and they love it. And, it's, mm -hmm. it's, sure. and I'm all for it, and, and I think they run a great, great program. Mm -hmm. But, man, uh, when, when, when it gets going, I don't want to be on the ground <laughs> at all. Yeah. yeah um I was of course, we're all stand-up guys, so I don't know. That was a fair yeah. question. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. We, we need Henner Gracie here to defend himself. I, I was over in Honolulu a couple months ago, and I visited my Hapkido Grandmaster. And, um, I mean, I've known him for 40-something years now, since the 70s. And uh, I'm in a, in a, I, I have a relationship with him now where I can ask him the questions that I couldn't ask him when I was training yeah, with him sure. daily. Of course. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so under Master Hong, um, I don't know, what do you, look, you, you, you follow the trends. I mean, what do you think about jujitsu and, and ground fighting and stuff like that? Because in Hapkido we do a little bit, right? right. A little bit, but mm -hmm. just a little bit, the way I was trained. And he just goes, oh, Davey, he goes, you know how to kick, you do not have to know how to wrestle, right? right. And that was, that's his big thing. And he yeah. was a really fast, really hard kicker. And he just firmly believes if you kick somebody one time, you know how to kick, it's over with. Yeah. And I kind of tend to agree with I, that. I, I'm in agreement with that, but at the same time, you know, um, again, everybody knows a little bit about uh, ground fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, right from the get-go, I'm a judo man from, you know, uh -huh. uh, back from the late 50s, 60s, yeah. I, I was already doing judo. And I know it's important to know how to go to the ground. Hey, but enough to be able to, when you hit the ground, because yeah. I don't really want to to be grappling on a pavement or, or right. concrete or, or wood. But at the same time, uh, it's important to know on the ground. Yeah. So they brought something, they brought an element to the, they opened up people's eyes <clears throat> going to the ground. Mm -hmm. And which it was a great element that they brought here, which I'm all for it because I'm a, I'm a uh, ground person also. But at the same time, I'm a stand-up uh, person. I like being stand-up, but 
But if somebody tackles me and I learn how to move out of the way and so forth, eventually, if he corners me up against the wall and takes me to the ground, I need to know what to do. Right. So today, yes. my very favorite MMA move that I've ever seen mm -hmm. was Benny the Jet fighting this guy in Japan, I think. And you're standing there and 180 back kick, boom, hit him, stunned him a little bit. Then you came in and you hip threw him over the top and you were up in the air above him and you drove him into the mat. Still my favorite. I played for my students all the time, <laughs> right? And that was I, a decade, two decades before MMA, right? It, yeah. it, it all right. has, it all has, it, just put it this way. All the yard has something great to offer. Yeah, but I agree. You know, by itself, you know, this day you have to add a little, uh, you know, enough. If you go to the ground, you need to know enough to scramble and get right back up. Exactly. And or on the to, on the and yeah. stand up, yeah. you got to know how to close that gap. So when it really comes down to the art of war, I say 80% mental, 20% mm -hmm. physical, 99.9.9% of the rest of that is internal, which is emotional, is what everybody hides, yes. yeah, yeah, and yeah, learning yeah. how to deal with that. So with that being said, to all our viewers out there, you know, so they get a chance to see. Hey, now, I, I talk about back then what, what was old time training mm. is new time training. Mm. It's, it's still the same back sure. then to this day. Right. That's so right. that's what we leave the viewers that are watching this, that nothing really changed. You got a good foundation and you build on that. Yes. And any which way you can on a foundation. Yeah. So with all you viewers, that you had a chance to really listen to a lot of experience in front of you. Until we see you again. Next time. It was an honor.